Lexus has just unveiled the Lexus RX for the 2023 model year and I'm gonna compare it in this video to the Mercedes GLE and compare the front side and the rear. I made a uh, video on uh, my second channel talking about this Lexus RX and what I think of it. I think it's a really really good update from Lexus but from what I've heard from other people and comments is that they don't really like what Lexus has done to the front end. We're gonna talk about that when we have a look at the front end. And also the interior, compare the Mercedes GLE to the Lexus RX. So let's have a look quickly at what the Lexus is here. I'm gonna compare the RX 500H, which is closest to the GLE 450. It has 367 horsepower and all wheel drive from a hybrid system with a turbocharged 2.4 liter inline four. And it costs around $70,000 for this top level trim of the new RX. The Mercedes GLE 450 has all wheel drive a standard at 362 horsepower from a hybrid powertrain and it costs around $65,000. So we don't have the official pricing for the Lexus just yet, but it's, they're gonna be very, very close to each other. So what I think about this Lexus, let's have a look at these designs here and compare them in front, side and rear. So let's start with the front here. This is obviously the new 2023 Lexus RX. And what they did in the front end that a lot of people don't like is uh, that it has this body panel kind of uh, color body colored now so it's not a a uh, clear framing of the grill anymore you can see that the grill kind of goes in and morphs into the rest of the body here and I think this is a very unique treatment of how you can implement a grill in the front end in addition to that we now have the headlights being in the exact same line as the edge of the top part of the grill which I think looks beautiful and of course these LEDs that is typical for Lexus and a clear identifier looking at it at night we also have a nice shelf for the headlight to rest upon and this area is if you go and watch my second my, my video on my second channel I talk a lot about this corner down here and comparing it to the old model and how much better this looks in the front end I'm a huge fan of this design I think it's a lot cleaner than the old one it just looks more grown up it's not over styled however there are some problems with this design we're going to talk about that when we look at the side view going down to the GLE let me say that the GLE to me is one of the best looking SUVs in this size right now I don't know what it is about the GLE it has to do with the stance of the car this is one of these cars that translated really really well from sketches early sketches into production without losing the stance of the car and that happens so often specifically in this segment right here SUVs when we see the sketches usually we see the wheels popping out bulging out with some massive 30 inch wheels in the sketches and then it kind of loses all that in the uh, in the production but here this is definitely one of the best looking stanced car in my opinion and I actually think that this upside down uh, smiling grill works really well on the GLE this looks like I don't know how to explain it but it looks like um, almost like a video game car video game design almost the military style in this design it just looks so solid the GLE I'm a huge fan of the design of this they're coming out with a facelift uh, for the 2023 model year but from what I've seen in the spy photos they're not going to change a lot maybe some details inside of the housing of the headlights and stuff like that very very good design by Mercedes if I were comparing this to the old RX the choice would have been <laughs> really simple I would have definitely gone with the GLE but now when we have this clean RX the choice become a little more difficult so here we have the side view let's talk about the Lexus here what I love about Lexus is they do definitely have their own way of styling cars you can see we have a lot of lines going on here and that is typical Lexus almost uh, you know borderline over styled but that's also a, a kind of tradition of uh, uh, Japanese cars to have them be more stylized specifically when you compare them to German cars it's a lot more lines and still beautiful line flow in this design there is just one detail it's not even a detail it, it's it's more than a detail in this case that I'm I don't think suits this design and that is this surfacing treatment right here you can see that we have sharp lines all over this design this line right here this shoulder line then goes into this that we've seen in a lot of concept cars and then we have this sharp line in the in the lower part and the sharp line down here and then 
then we have a super weird line going here that is so undefined that it looks like they have had a problem in the 3D software like Alias Automotive and they didn't get the, uh, the, the, the surfacing right before they sent it off to production. That's kind of what this surface looks to me like. I want to have this line maybe continuing a little further and just fading out beautifully, sub more subtle than we have here. That's the only kind of uh, negative thing I have to say about this design. And, but it's such a pronounced thing in the side view right here that it uh, really pops out when you look at it from this view specifically. We also have a pretty long front overhang here, but it doesn't really bother me that much, but, but it's definitely longer than rear overhang and it kind of offsets the balance of this design and make it look maybe a little front heavy looking at it straight from a side view. Now looking at the Mercedes GLE down here, I mean it's just a clean design with proper line flow and graphics that's connected in the front and in the rear as well. It's a beautiful looking SUV. You have this clean line. You can see just how subtle this shoulder line is. And then nothing going on, nothing styling, over styling going on in the entire side of the car. Then we have an almost straight line down here in the bottom that kind of goes into the bumper in the rear end up here. Kind of a little disconnect in, in, the, in the levels of this. This sits a little higher than this line right here. But it doesn't bother me because we have this outlet right here that we've seen on so many other Mercedes these days and it breaks up a little bit of the line flow but it's not something that bothers me uh, a lot and then we have this every time I see a GLE out on the streets I always look at this piece right here there's like a cut in the body panel or in the what is this a B C panel in the C panel at the top of the C panel we have this interesting cut in it and I think that has to do with the simply the manufacturing methods of creating a, a solid piece that has this uh, this corner to it that's the only uh, uh, explanation I have for that little line. Next time you see a GLE, look at the C pillar in the top. You're gonna see that cut, almost like a knife cut the car uh, in that specific body panel. Still looking at it from a side view, it just looks so solid, almost like uh, if you're playing the video game Halo and you're looking for a car to take you out of the situation that you're in. You need to go fast, you need to go a little bit off-road. <laughs> this is the type of vehicle that I would expect or design that I would expect to see in a video game like Halo. It looks planted, beefy and it has the perfect proportions in my opinion of an SUV. The overhang in the front is not as long as you have in the Lexus and in the rear it sticks out a little further there in the, in the front so giving it a forward motion like this and also you have a solid greenhouse nothing over styled while in the Lexus we have a lot of styling going on specifically in this area right here both beautiful in their own way and I really like these wheels as well as I said before Mercedes is doing some of the best looking wheels from a factory in my opinion they're still doing it today looking at it from a rear view this is where Lexus really shines in my opinion because all of these angles, they kind of converge into one center point around the Lexus logo. We have this line going in here, pointing to that point, and then we have the, the D pillar or the C pillar also pointing to this location of the Lexus logo in the center. And this is something that Lexus has been doing for a while now, and I think it kind of looks like a very tight rear end. And in addition to that, we have these new taillights that compared to the old ones, these are just on a different level. And I love the way you look on the IS, specifically the, the sporty IS 500 with a with V8, but they also look very, very good here on the RX. This lower uh, diffuser is also redesigned from the previous generation, a lot cleaner, not too overstyled anymore like we have previously, but you can still see this surfacing here. There's something weird going on with this surfacing. You can see it from all angles because it's such a, such a big surface of the car and that still bothers me in this specific view as well. Now, this is also where the GLE shines because just look at how planted this car looks from stock. It looks like it's a sketch. It looks like a concept car looking at it from this view. You have the proper stance plantedness of the rear end. 
these big massive muscular rear fenders and I love that the taillights they point down because this plants the car even more having these pointing down it just creates this beautiful stance and looking at it from a uh, from a straight rear view that's where you can really appreciate the plantedness of the GLE there used to be a time when uh, not that long ago when BMW were the masters of planting their production cars but honestly looking at the C63 the previous generation specifically the coupe with the wider arches and more so in the SUV segment the GLE GLE right here, Mercedes has now taken over the throne as the best planted cars from factory. Just look at the volume of this thing. It's it's very bubbly and thick and it looks solid and that's what I love about the GLE. For me it's just about the, the plantedness of the Mercedes GLE. I haven't seen that type of design uh, execution in any other SUV but it doesn't only have to do with the exterior. I really want to talk about the interior here as well. The Lexus looks pretty pretty good. I mean we do have a full digital display right here and a full infotainment system right here. However I don't like this cut right here this is very Toyota if you've ridden or driven any Corolla for example you're gonna recognize these angles in the display and I don't understand why we need to have those I'd rather have it be more clean and more uh, kind of geometrical on the inside specifically when we're talking about a rectangular screen we don't need to add all this plastic around it and frame it in such a such a over styled way in my opinion it's still a very very clean interior I really like how these lines are straight and then kind of continues into this point with this curvature down here going down into the uh, air vents the materials look really clean as well looking at the Mercedes now Mercedes has this uh, as we've talked about several times in, in on this channel we have this big iPad in the middle with two connected screens however the difference here and why I think this looks a lot better than a normal iPad that we've seen in a lot of other cars is that we still have a house for this entire setup so both of these screens the, the entire iPad itself is now framed in a nice way so it doesn't just it doesn't look like they just you know mounted an iPad on top of the dash and put some glue on there this looks like it's been thoughtfully integrated in the interior design and that's all I'm asking for when it comes to these new screens that we have on the interior I also love the polished wood uh, texture I'm not sure if this is real and the four air outlets here it almost looks like a command center this interior and it goes really well with with the video game style exterior that we have of the beefy muscular GLE so if I were to pick between these two I really like what Lexus has done in the front end specifically of the new RX even though a lot of people don't like it I think it looks a lot cleaner a lot more modern and a lot more grown up it looks like uh, they've taken their distinctly framed front grill and created some uh, creative integration of that grill into the body of the car I really like what they've done there however I can't get over the side view and that big curvature soft organic surface that kind of breaks up all the other sharp angles and surfaces that we have in the car it looks like it's out of place and for that reason I'm gonna go with the Mercedes GLE in this comparison right here let me know which one you would pick the Lexus RX or the GLE thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video